Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, August 19th. From the San Antonio Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect partly sunny skies and a high of 102 in San Antonio today. That heat might not be our favorite, but eggplants love it. And those plants are bearing fruit left and right. We'll show you how to make several dishes from appetizers to mains that make the most of that bounty. As of Monday, medical technicians working in labs around San Antonio have reported the results of 255,125 COVID-19 tests in Bear County. We'll take you inside the city's largest hospital lab, which takes up as much space as nearly three basketball courts, today in our latest special report on the coronavirus pandemic. And now, let's move on to the top stories for the day. Over the course of 12 months, Timothy Ray Ramos had the misfortune of working at a Dollar General store that was robbed three times. The first time, on November 21, 2017, Ramos escaped without suffering physical harm. About two weeks later, the same robber hit the store at 3350 Southwest Military. This time, he stabbed Ramos in the neck with a knife. Then, on November 9, 2018, a trio of robbers raided the store. One jumped over the counter to loot the cash register, while another aimed a rifle at Ramos. Ramos, fearing for his life, tried to grab the rifle. The gunman shot Ramos in his left leg, upper torso, and right arm. Ramos was taken to the hospital where he underwent 11 hours of surgery. He remained in intensive care for two weeks. Now, Ramos is suing Dollar General and the three robbers for more than $1 million in damages. 18-year-old Madeline Lomas, a San Antonian who graduated from a small private school in Bolverde, is headed to UT not knowing anyone except her new roommate, whom she befriended over Instagram this summer. Lomas had looked forward to new student orientation events to make friends before the academic year began but the coronavirus has moved those summer orientation sessions online and changed the way universities house students on campus. Some schools decided to go entirely virtual. Most will welcome students to campuses in some physical form, but as thousands descend upon universities this month, including first-year arrivals who had anticipated life-changing, immersive experiences, things won't have the same feel. You can read more about what Lomas and other members of the Class of 2024 face in the link in the episode's description. Bruce Boquin's mother, who is 88, takes medication for hypertension and heart disease, conditions made more treacherous by the threat of COVID-19. And now, U.S. Postal Service delays. Usually, her prescription refills would arrive in the mail about two weeks before she ran out. Even more than late medication, it's the week's delayed billing statements and the unavoidable late fees that upset Boquin's mother, who once worked as a fastidious bookkeeper. It's not her fault that she didn't pay her bill on time, said Boquin. Boquin and his mother aren't alone in living with suddenly sluggish mail service. Other residents told the San Antonio Express News about their confusion and irritation at deliveries that lately have languished in transit, including lost credit card payments, late business deliveries, and more. You can read their stories at the link in the episode's description. Columnist Gilbert Garcia writes, quote, This year, slowing down the postal system isn't the unintended consequence of an effort to hold down postage rates. For President Donald Trump and his hand-picked postmaster general, Republican megadonor Louis DeJoy, it's a campaign strategy. It's a technique designed to make the entire election process look like a fraudulent mess to suppress voter turnout to give Trump a handy excuse and a basis for litigation if he loses to the former vice president, Joe Biden. In his latest column, Garcia puts Trump's post office tactics in the context of his unprecedented presidency. To keep our readers up to date on the path of COVID-19, the Express News has built a dashboard of interactive graphics showing the spread of the virus in the San Antonio area, in Texas as a whole, and across the United States. We've also created an interactive map of San Antonio for COVID-19 testing sites that don't require a doctor's referral. You can find a link to the dashboard and the interactive map in this episode's description. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more inside your Express News subscription. (music) 
Mayor Ron Nirenberg said Tuesday there were 143 new cases of the virus, propelling the total number of people who have tested positive in Bear County to 44,265 since the pandemic started in March. The death toll as verified by Metro Health now stands at 637. University Health System CEO told Bear County Commissioners on Tuesday the devastating long-term health effects of the coronavirus on some patients may force the health system to build satellite hospitals across Bear County in the next decade. Property tax revenue would be on the line for cities that choose to defund their police departments under a new legislative proposal pitched Tuesday by Governor Greg Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, and House Speaker Dennis Bonin. More than 100 Laredo activists turned out last weekend to protest the border wall, but instead of bullhorns and placards, they came out with rollers and an ocean of yellow paint. In San Antonio, at least four mail sorting machines reportedly have been dismantled and removed from their locations. The U.S. Postal Service controversy was a point of conversation on this week's episode of the Express News Budo Politics podcast. A Northwest Side bar is facing backlash after video surfaced of a crowded dance floor with patrons not wearing masks on Saturday night. San Antonio likely will run out of money to fund the city's public health response to the COVID-19 pandemic if federal lawmakers don't come up with more money to fight the spread of this disease, the city's top health officials warned on Tuesday. The Lind Company is planning to team up with the San Antonio Housing Authority to build a mixed-income apartment complex in the fast-growing Tobin Hill neighborhood. The Federal Reserve's $600 billion Main Street Lending Program, launched in early June, has seen a slow buildup in August, Michael Taylor explains in his latest column. Are there costs for Texans if undocumented immigrants are excluded from the 2020 census count? Yes, there are, and they are severe, writes Dudley L. Poston Jr. Read his commentary at the link in the episode's description. After filing a lawsuit last week over being locked out of its Riverwalk space, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company Restaurant and Market says it has worked out its differences with the landlord. Oil and gas producer Abraxas Petroleum Corporation reported a hefty loss in the second quarter as the company announced it was exploring strategic alternatives that could include the sale of the firm. Last week, Navarro High School announced it was suspending the football program for two weeks after an outbreak of COVID-19 cases. Superintendent Wendy Russell says the district remains optimistic that the football season will go on as scheduled. Mike Finger explains why. After the coronavirus pandemic shut down schools in March, Sarah Zimmerman, a fifth grade teacher at Huppert's Elementary in the San Antonio ISD, spent a great deal of time learning how to use different apps and collaborating with other teachers to make better virtual lessons. Now, Zimmerman and other local teachers and parents are beginning the school year virtually. Some will continue it all year, with the benefit of experience from the hastily implemented switch last spring. In some cases, the adults learned more than the children did. You can find some of their lessons about what worked, what didn't, and what they want to change this virtual semester in Ali Malik's latest story. It's also important to note that the teacher said these views are their own and don't necessarily reflect that of their school districts. And now let's move on to the fun stuff. A new San Antonio brewery, Brew Monkey Beer Company, is set to open on August 29th on the city's northeast side. The 2,000-square-foot facility is equipped with a 15-barrel system, and owner Jim Hansen said that he will have five to seven beers available at the noon launch on his 20-tap line in the tasting room, as well as 32-ounce crawlers for the curbside sale. Dallas State Fair is canceled but the Rustic is bringing fried favorites and fun to San Antonio to keep the celebration going this fall. The Black Rifle Coffee Company era began in San Antonio at 5 a.m. this morning with full drive through and in-store service at the new store near the intersection of Bitters Road and US-281. 
Noted San Antonio chef Jason Dady has taken over the restaurant space inside the Sullivan Carriage House at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens and plans to launch a new concept called Jardin. You can now watch Ethan Hawke in the electric new biopic, Tesla, at home on streaming service. You can find our full roundup of what's new in home entertainment at the link in the episode's description. And that's all for today. This was your Express Briefing. My name is Luis Vasquez. Please consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast inside your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.